So GPT-5 is officially here, and everyone's talking about how it's faster, smarter, and in the right places, even cheaper. After digging into the numbers, I think this is one of those rare times you should seriously consider switching your AI agents over to the new model immediately. Today, I'm going to break down exactly what this update means for automation, show you where GPT-5 actually beats everything else, and then walk you through building a GPT-5-powered agent so you can see the difference for yourself. Let's start this out with an overview. GPT-5 is OpenAI's latest model, released on August 7th, 2025. It is now August 10th. I wanted to give it a few days before testing because I knew the rollout would be a bit bumpy. It's available to all ChatGPT users, free and paid. It's designed for improved reasoning, faster performance, and more consistent output compared to previous versions. The focus here is on reliability with complex multi-step tasks, which makes it well-suited for advanced automations. Just like GPT-4, GPT-5 comes out in several versions, the standard model plus mini and nano, each at different price points. The full model's input cost is about half of GPT-4.1's, while output tokens are slightly more expensive, so it's worth keeping an eye on if your workflows generate a lot of text. Cached input tokens are much cheaper, making them a good option for repeated queries and automation workflows. For most automations, this means you can scale up your use of GPT-5 without seeing the same kind of call spikes that earlier models could cause. Whenever OpenAI releases a new model, they run it through a series of benchmarks, basically standardized tests that measure how well it performed at different types of tasks. On nearly all of these, GPT-5 scored higher than any of their previous models. One example is the SWE bench, which measures coding accuracy using real problems pulled from GitHub. Here, GPT-5 scored around 75%, so roughly three out of four coding challenges solved correctly, which you can see here in the pink bar chart. That's a clear jump over GPT-4.1 and earlier models. For code-related automations, this means fewer mistakes and less time troubleshooting. Benchmarks are one thing, but I also want to show you a quick example of this code generation from OpenAI's site. They gave GPT-5 just a short prompt and it built entire working projects like the rolling ball mini game, pixel art, typing game, drum simulator, lo-fi visualizer. So as a software engineer myself, that's pretty impressive. Tool usage accuracy is another area where GPT-5 has improved. This directly impacts AI agents and NAN by reducing incorrect tool calls and failed runs. Long context handling is also stronger, meaning it can keep track of more information over extended workflows without losing relevant details. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, described GPT-5 as being like having a team of PhD level experts in your pocket. That's definitely a bold claim, but the data backs it up. GPT-5 scored higher than previous models on advanced reasoning benchmarks, including math problem solving and graduate level exam questions. GPT-5 is much smarter across the board. So what does this mean for NAN automations? Well, for NAN users, GPT-5 allows for more complex and stable automations. It can handle text, images, and code within a single model, reducing the need to switch between different tools. Costs can be reduced in two ways, lower model prices, especially with mini and nano, and fewer errors that waste tokens or require reruns. So at this point, you've heard the claims about GPT-5. Let's put it to the test. We'll build an NAN workflow, run GPT-5 side by side with the previous model, and see if the results back up the benchmarks. We'll start by connecting GPT-5 to NAN. Here I've created a new workflow in NAN. Let's add our first step, which will be an AI agent note. So click the plus icon and search for AI agent. As you can see, this created an agent node attached to a chat trigger. So anytime we open this chat and say a message, it'll be sent directly to the AI agent. But there's an error because we haven't connected a chat model to our agent yet. It needs this chat model to understand what we're saying. It's kind of like the agent's brain. We're going to click this plus icon and search open AI chat model. And here we'll need to connect a credential. So click create new credential. And this is kind of the password that connects our NAN to the actual OpenAI infrastructure. So go to openai.com and you'll need to create an account if you don't already have one. So once you do that, you'll go to the API platform and then create a project and add billing information and some funds. It can be something low like $5. Uh, you'll need some funds to use the actual API. Once that's done, you can go to API keys and click create new secret key and name it whatever you want, select your project, and click create secret key, and here is your API key. Now you wanna copy this and paste it somewhere like your notes or somewhere secure, because once you close this modal, you won't be able to view it again. So I'll copy it, paste it into this field here in NAN, and click save. 
And once it's done, it'll say connection tested successfully. So we're good to go. Now we can choose the model from this list. So we'll search GPT-5. And you see, we have the option to choose the base model, the mini version, or the nano version. I'll choose the base model. I'll open the chat and send another message. How many R's in strawberry? And there we go. The chat model is thinking. Let's see, three, pretty smart. That's it. We're now connected to the GPT-5 model in NAN. And from here, I'll set up a practical automation with tool usage so that we can test it out. In three, two, one. Boom, our agent has access to these three tools. The first one is for accessing the Google Sheet with our contacts. Here it is. We've got contacts like Jon Snow, Arya Stark. So now if we ask the agent about a contact, it should access the sheet and grab their information. Then we've got Tavily for web search. Tavily is an AI tool for searching the web and collecting articles so that our agent has relevant and up-to-date information. And lastly, there's the Gmail tool to send drafts. So the way this will work is we'll ask the agent to research a topic and then send a report to a person in our contact database. We'll try it with GPT 4.1, then we'll try it with GPT 5 and see if there's any differences in the research quality. So we have the GPT 4.1 connected and we're saying to the model, research latest James Webb telescope and send a concise report to Jon Snow. All right, the 4.1 finished up and the draft was sent successfully. So now I'm running the agent again with the exact same prompt and I've updated the model to use GPT 5 and it looks like it's been successful. So both the drafts were created and here they are side by side. On the left, GPT 4.1 kept it short and sweet, one finding with two links, and on the right, GPT 5 went full research mode, multiple discoveries, more sources, and way more detail. So obviously there's a big difference in depth. This is a single finding in a super high level and will be good for a quick skim, whereas this has multiple findings, it's deep and technical, and will be good for research heavy reports. Now the GPT-5 did take a bit longer and I'm assuming it costed a couple more pennies, but for me, this made it clear that GPT-5 is worth it when detail and depth matter more than speed. I know we didn't go super deep into testing today. My goal here was just to give you the overview, show you how to connect GPT-5 and NAN, and run a quick side-by-side -side so you can see the difference for yourself. If you want a full breakdown with more experiments and cost comparisons, let me know. I can make a follow-up video where we really test out the model with different use cases. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, leave a like and subscribe, and check out my free community in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.